February 22nd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Leviticus chapters 9 and 10 from the Old Testament. On the eighth day, Moses summoned Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel and said to Aaron, Take for yourself a bull calf for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering, both flawless, and present them before the Lord. Then tell the Israelites, Take a male goat for a sin offering and a calf and lamb, both a year old and flawless, for a burnt offering, and an ox and a ram for peace offerings to sacrifice before the Lord, and a grain offering mixed with olive oil, for today the Lord is going to appear to you. So they took what Moses had commanded to the front of the meeting tent, and the whole congregation presented them and stood before the Lord. Then Moses said, This is what the Lord has commanded you to do, so that the glory of the Lord may appear to you. Moses then said to Aaron, Approach the altar and make your sin offering, and your burnt offering, and make atonement on behalf of yourself, and on behalf of the people, and also make the people's offering, and make atonement on behalf of them just as the Lord has commanded. So Aaron approached the altar and slaughtered the sin offering calf, which was for himself. Then Aaron's sons presented the blood to him, and he dipped his finger in the blood and put it on the horns of the altar, and the rest of the blood he poured out on the base of the altar. The fat and the kidneys and the protruding lobe of the liver from the sin offering he offered up in smoke on the altar, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. But the flesh and the hide he completely burned up outside the camp. He then slaughtered the burnt offering, and his sons handed the blood to him, and he splashed it against the altar sides. The burnt offering itself they handed to him by its parts, including the head, and he offered them up in smoke on the altar. And he washed the entrails and the legs and offered them up in smoke on top of the burnt offering on the altar. Then he presented the people's offering. He took the sin offering male goat, which was for the people, slaughtered it, and performed a decontamination rite with it, like the first one. He then presented the burnt offering, and did it according to the standard regulation. Next he presented the grain offering, filled his hand with some of it, and offered it up in smoke on the altar, in addition to the morning burnt offering. Then he slaughtered the ox and the ram, the peace offering sacrifices which were for the people. And Aaron's sons handed the blood to him, and he splashed it against the altar sides. As for the fat parts from the ox and from the ram, the fatty tail, the fat covering the entrails, the kidneys, and the protruding lobe of the liver, they set those on the breast, and he offered the fat parts up in smoke on the altar. Finally, Aaron waved the breast and the right thigh as a wave offering before the Lord, just as Moses had commanded. Then Aaron lifted up his hands towards the people and blessed them, and descended from making the sin offering, the burnt offering, and the peace offering. Moses and Aaron then entered into the meeting tent. When they came out, they blessed the people, and the glory of the Lord appeared to all the people. Then fire went out from the presence of the Lord and consumed the burnt offering, and the fat parts on the altar, and all the people saw it. So they shouted loudly and fell down with their faces to the ground. Then Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, each took his fire pan and put fire in it, set incense on it, and presented strange fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them to do. So fire went out from the presence of the Lord and consumed them, so that they died before the Lord. Moses then said to Aaron, This is what the Lord spoke. Among the ones close to me, I will show myself holy, and in the presence of all the people, I will be honored. So Aaron kept silent. Moses then called to Mishael and Elzaphan, the sons of Aziel, Aaron's uncle, and said to them, Come near, carry your brothers away from the front of the sanctuary to a place outside the camp. So they came near and carried them away in their tunics to a place outside the camp, just as Moses had spoken. Then Moses said to Aaron and to Eleazar and Ithamar, his other two sons, Do not dishevel the hair of your heads, and do not tear your garments, so that you do not die, and so that wrath does not come on the whole congregation. Your brothers, all the house of Israel, are to mourn the burning which the Lord had caused. But you must not go out from the entrance of the meeting tent, lest you die, for the Lord's anointing oil is on you. So they acted according to the word of Moses. 
Then the Lord spoke to Aaron, Do not drink wine or strong drink, you and your sons with you, when you enter into the meeting tent, so that you do not die, which is a perpetual statute throughout your generations, as well as to distinguish between the holy and the common, and between the unclean and the clean, and to teach the Israelites all the statutes that the Lord has spoken to them through Moses. Then Moses spoke to Aaron and to Eleazar and to Ithmar, his remaining sons, Take the grain offering which remains from the gifts of the Lord, and eat it unleavened beside the altar, for it is most holy. You must eat it in a holy place, because it is your allotted portion and the allotted portion of your sons from the gifts of the Lord, for this is what I have been commanded. Also the breast of the wave offering and the thigh of the contribution offering you must eat in a ceremonial clean place, you and your sons and daughters with you. For they have been given as your allotted portion, and the allotted portion of your sons from the peace offering sacrifices of the Israelites. The thigh of the contribution offering and the breast of the wave offering they must bring in addition to the gifts of the fat parts, to wave them as a wave offering before the Lord. And it will belong to you and your sons with you for a few, just as the Lord has commanded. Later Moses sought diligently for the sin offering male goat but it had actually been burnt. So he became angry at Eleazar and Ithamar, Aaron's remaining sons, saying, Why did you not eat the sin offering in the sanctuary? For it is most holy, and he gave it to you to bear the iniquity of the congregation, to make atonement on their behalf before the Lord. See here, its blood was not brought into the holy place within. You should have certainly have eaten it in the sanctuary, just as I commanded. But Aaron spoke to Moses, See here, just today they presented their sin offering and their burnt offering before the Lord, and such things as these have happened to me. If I had eaten a sin offering today, would the Lord have been pleased? When Moses heard this explanation, he was satisfied. God, I know a lot of, a lot of people like to discuss kind of that last part about between Moses and Aaron and, and what was actually happening. But I kind of get the feeling, if I was Aaron, that I would have been so incredibly fearful of you at that moment, I'm not sure I would know what to do. <laughs> I'd be a little bit afraid of, of doing anything. Um, and I say that only because I've been stunned before stunned before watching you do amazing, glorious, incredible, fabulous things that totally make sense to me. And then I've also watched you either allow happen or you actually cause to happen things that I was baffled by, I was completely stunned by, either to me or other people I know. Yet in those those moments of being stunned, of being aware of how sovereign you truly are, of getting a glimpse into just how big this God is that we serve. I think in those stunned moments is when we actually grow the most in our relationship with you. When we're given pause for a moment to, to understand too often we just go along with life and taking things for granted and skipping along through situations saying, oh, I got this. And then something happens that literally stops us in our track and says, oh my goodness. And again, it may be an, oh my goodness, that is amazing. And I'm just stunned by what God just did right then. But more often than not, we're stunned by things that we don't understand that we know you reign supreme over. Whether that means something you took out of our own life. Whether that means somebody that you removed from this earth. Or a situation that you allowed to happen, have happen.
I keep going back to you promised to make all things work for good. But the rest of that talks about for those who are in your will. Not good for us. Not good for what we think good is. But for what you know good is. It wasn't good for you to have two sons of Aaron the priest offering things that you hadn't commanded or doing things that they shouldn't have been doing. So you removed them from the situation. You stunned a lot of people that day, that day, not just their father. And I even think about Moses. Moses didn't seem to be stunned at all. He seemed to be continuing to go on. But maybe Moses had been stunned by so many things you had done that he had gotten used to how big you were and how sovereign you were and how powerful you were. And he was on to that next level that we all hope to achieve, which is sheer humbleness and complete obedience to you. So the next time, God, that you stop me in my tracks and I, I sit there in stunned non-belief as to what just happened and maybe emotions such as fear and anger and frustration and depressions and sadness all come into my life because of that situation. Please help me remember in those moments that even something that I see is so incredibly bad that you have promised to make good. Not for me, not for the person in the situation or other people in the situation, but you promised to make it good for what you need it to be good for in this world. Next time this happens, God, Remind me that even though I'm stunned, it's a lesson to teach me that you are sovereign, that you are gigantic beyond anything I can imagine. And more importantly, even though you reign supreme over everything, you're complete in, in, completely in control of everything in this entire world, that I'm still important enough to you for you to cause things to happen, to make me stop and remember our relationship and remember who you are in my heart and in my life. I love you so much. In your son's name we pray. Amen. <laughs>